times what is midpoint? Halfway. It's halfway, right? Halfway between somewhere. Okay. So our formula for midpoint, guys, don't freak out. It's literally the halfway point. Okay. So let's go back to my little number line jog that I'm going to take here. So I start over here at four, right? I start walking away, and I end up over here at twelve. What's halfway between where I started and where I finished? Seven and a half. Four. Okay. Start at four. I end at twelve. What's halfway? Four. Four is where I started. Eight. Eight. Okay. Now how'd you get that? I was a half off. So I wouldn't do that. Okay. What do you think? Yeah, guys, halfway between somewhere is the average. You guys already doing that? We basically are taking the average. And when I'm doing midpoint, I only have two things to add. So when I take the average, you add them up and divide by the number, right? There's only two things. So when we think about midpoint formula, you're taking the average of your x's and the average of your y's, and you have a whole new coordinate. That's all it is. So we have to do like x equals and then y equals like do them separately. No, you basically you just do this. Like are we gonna have two different x one plus x two and divide by two? Y one plus y two divided by two. So we will have two different things. Yeah. Last year I said about something about changing y and just That's slow. That's where the change, yep. Make the y return to x that's slow. I agree. Alright, so the point is x1 plus x2 divided by 2, y1 plus y2 divided by 2. Now, that was a lot of forms we're going to cover in this class. And I'll admit, I forgot to print them out for you guys today. You see these white bullets in the background on the wall? And a lot of information on them. You guys will get those on Monday. They're yours to keep in your class. You can use those on every assessment. Not a poster, but your own sheet. Yes. And on those sheets, right here, is distance and midpoint. So while you don't have those today, you'll get those on Monday. Guys, okay, here's my whole thing, my take out. I don't want you to memorize the formula. Or it's great if you can. I don't want you to. I want you to know how to use the formula and understand what it does. That's what I want. Okay? So that's the whole point of you guys being those. I want you to know how to use the formula when you use it. So let's go ahead and practice this a little bit. So we did look at example one underneath the midpoint. We're going to write out the formula. X1 plus X2 divided by 2 and Y1 plus Y2. All right, so what is my x1? What is it again? Negative 4. What's my x2? You know what's up with that negative 3 difference? Two. And we're dividing it by 2. Put a comma. This is basically we're going to get an ordered pair. Okay, what's my y1? 11. Plus 4. All over 2. Okay, guys, what's negative 4 plus negative 3? Negative 7. Negative 7. Because for triple, we get negative 7 over 2. Okay, what's 11 plus 4? Okay, now here comes the next day of hyperventilation. Because <laughs> now what do we have as our answer? Fraction. Oh my god, the fraction. Okay, guys, it's just a fraction. Okay, here's the deal. Um, in this class, we're done here. Cool. Wait, we don't. Cool. We're done. Okay, well, here, okay, here's the beauty. In math class, fractions are awesome because there's nothing left to do. Okay. Now, 
You could probably take negative 7 halves and turn it into what, Brandon? 3.5. Negative 3.5. Okay. Now, the important thing to remember here is that all fractions are, are division problems. That fraction bar tells you to do what? To divide. So if I take negative 7 and divide it by 2, I get negative 3.5. Okay. No. Yes. Leave your answers in simplified fractional form and improper fractional form. It means it's okay to have a bigger number on top. We're not doing any mixed fractions at all. Cool. Okay. Now, however, on the homework on Math Excel, you guys need to look very closely in very tiny print underneath the answer box in blue. They will tell you the format they want the answer in. Make sure you read that. Because you might have the right answer. If that says round to the nearest tenth and you're putting in that, it's going to tell you what's wrong. So you need to make sure you're looking at that blue print and make sure you have the right format. Okay, so if it's one to the nearest tenth, that's telling you to put it into decimal format. Okay? So please make sure we have that available. Okay? Alright. Because we're short on time, do you guys want to do some more or, or no? I don't want to do Your homework's already on math yourself. Can you explain one more practice you can do? Oh, no. Why? Oh, it's troubling. Oh, is it because it has fractions? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, here's my question. Send you number three. How about we do this? Uh, no, that's not going to ever happen. <laughs> okay, uh, let's do this. Let's suppose I had three fours minus, I don't know, let's say uh, seven halves, or let's say plus, all over two. How would you begin doing that problem? Common denominator. Okay, good. So, but where, Brandon? I would say four. Uh, well, I guess that's seven over two. Well, do I need it for everything, or do I just need just the numerator? Just the numerator, right? So I got to do the three fourths and the seven halves. Okay, so what does four and two have in common? Four. Four. Okay. All right. So the three fourths already has a four, right? Yeah. So that stays the same. What do you have to do to this two to get to four? So then what do we do to the bottom? We got fourteen fourths. All over. Okay, guys, so what's 3 fourths plus 14 fourths? 7. I haven't done anything miraculous you guys haven't done before, right? It just looks really ugly, especially now, and that looks really confusing. All right, so Brandon, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. What is 30 divided by 2? What's half 30? So let's write that out for a minute. It's kind of interesting. 30. What you just did to me. Divided by 2 <laughs> is 15. That's what Brandon told us, right? Yeah. 30 divided by 2 is 15. Yeah. And Brandon also said half of 30. You guys, when we say half of something, that really means to do what? Divide by 2. To multiply. Yeah. Yeah. If I want to take 3 eighths, yeah, if I want to take 3 eighths of 140, we need to multiply 140 by 3 eighths. So if I'm going to take half of 30, we need to multiply it by 30. What's the result? All right, so what you guys are essentially telling me here, the big idea, is that 30 divided by 2 is the same as 1 half times 30. And you guys are looking at me like, duh. Why are you even telling me this? Because there's a big, really important piece here that a lot of you guys are dealing with. If I'm dividing by a number, it doesn't matter what that number is. That number could be a fraction, that number could be a whole number, it doesn't matter. If I'm dividing by a value, I divide by a value is the same as multiplying by to the same. That's the big idea. To divide by a number, in this case 2, right, 17 fourths divided by 2, it's the same thing as multiplying by to the same. So how are we going to handle this thing in the red? 
Well, instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to multiply by a half. And so now we multiply fractions, you just multiply straight across. So I get 17 over 8. All right. So I guess if you look at number 3 on that practice set, yes, you're going to have fractions. But it doesn't mean that you change what you do. It means that the steps are going to be a little bit longer. Because you need to slow down. And oh my god, please keep yourself space. This room Breathe. is not environmentally friendly. Write and take up lots of food. Take up lots of space. Don't try to squeeze it in there. Try to conserve the paper. The more you try to squeeze, the more you screw up. Take lots of space. Write big. Take the space you need to make sure it's legible. You make a lot less mistakes up here. Don't squeeze it in. And we are not an environmental friendly room. We take up lots of paper because it's okay to do so. I'm OCD. I need as much paper as I can get. Yeah. Not OCD. Oh, whatever it is. <laughs> That's just compulsive. Yeah. All right. I think we'll stop there on. Monday, I think we'll revisit the idea of deriving the formula, so we're not going to do a deal with that today. So let's go ahead and conclude at this point. Cool.